And so we came to Rome. The brothers and sisters there had heard that we were coming, and they traveled as far as the Forum of Appius and the Three Taverns to meet us. At the sight of these people, Paul thanked God and was encouraged. Acts 28, 14 and 15. Luke's first-hand account tells us that Christians came about a day's journey from all around Rome in order to welcome Paul. The Forum of Appius was an ancient marketplace along the Appian Way, about 40 miles southeast of Rome. Now, the ancient historian Horace mentions the site as a post station full of, quote, boatmen and cheating innkeepers. Three Taverns was another station along the Appian Way where three roads intersected about 30 miles from Rome. Now, this city originally had shops designed for travelers, including the general store, the blacksmith, and the so-called refreshment house. The Forum of Appius and Three Taverns, just two places that most people sort of skip over in Scripture, but I find them to be fascinating geographical markers in biblical history. Their inclusion shows us that these were real people coming from real places in order to meet the renowned evangelist. Apparently, many of the Christians here in Rome were well aware of Paul, even before he arrived here as a prisoner in about 60 AD. A few years earlier, when Paul was in Corinth, he had written a letter to the church in Rome. Now, Paul had intended to follow his letter with a personal visit, but those plans got interrupted when he was arrested in Jerusalem and imprisoned for two years in Caesarea. Now Paul finally made it to Rome as a prisoner. And even after two years, many people were here to see in person the man who had encouraged them so much in writing. Could you imagine meeting the Apostle Paul? What a moment that must have been. Paul's letter to the Romans had made its rounds through the community. It began with a powerful declaration. I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. Romans 1, 16. Paul then went on to use several people and events from the Old Testament to set up the gospel message. He used Adam to explain the concept of inherited sin. He used Abraham as an example of righteousness being credited by faith. And he used David, who shared the heart of the gospel some 1,000 years earlier when he said, Blessed are they whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord will never count against him. Psalm 32, 1 and 2. Over the centuries, Paul's letter to the Romans has become known for its clear presentation of the gospel. Within its verses is a step-by-step -step map of sorts, which is appropriately called the Roman Road. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 5.8, but God demonstrates his love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. This simple presentation of the gospel of Jesus Christ has been used in evangelism for centuries.